a fascination with the texture of paper led her to become a bookbinder's apprentice. Today, she's an artist who creates one-of-a-kind hand-bound books. feel of this draft more and more than this one, but that's me. I don't know that they care about that. So they want in sort of an old-fashioned, Wild West feel. Okay. I am a very tactile person, and I gravitate always toward textures. I like that there has been life in a piece. To me, it translates into the piece you're making. So this first one is the letterpress. the letterpress, and these two are the Stonehenge. Right. Great. I think I was captivated because the exposed bindings elevated, it elevated the work of keeping things together, which is not an easy thing for me to do, not an easy thing for a lot of us to do, and the fact that the binding was exposed and deemed just as beautiful and just as important as the cover um, or anything inside the book just spoke to me. Then I'll get to play with the paper. Thanks. My motivation for doing this work is to help, help me think about the issues in the world. My artist books are often, but not always, inspired by both the natural world around me and social commentary, social situations. And um, working through a piece helps me think more deeply about it. My aesthetic as an artist is very textural and it is irregular. The selection of material is really important because that also is part of the communication of the idea you're trying to get across. Things will change. I have never done an artist book from start to finish. I've always had to change a material or a kind of writing implement or a shape. create a book, uh, the first thing I will do is select the materials. That means deciding whether the cover is going to be a hard cover or a soft cover. Choosing the text paper. Choosing the thread. Choosing the cover paper, deciding about the cover art. This press is, it's wood, and then this is metal. This is a metal plate, and it makes the paper really fat. Sometimes I like the fullness of the paper. I will then measure the spine of the book block, if that's applicable, so I know how why to make the spine of the cover on the cover. I will make the holes with a drill press or with an awl or with a Japanese punch. Once that is done, I mark head and tail so I know always which direction I'm going in. And I will pierce the sewing, sewing sections of each signature, which is a section of pages. And then I will sew and bind the book. The 
Cincinnati Book Art Society saved me when I got here. I'm going to put it back to your paper. I, cut, I had a, it's a certain kind of paper. It's a certain kind of Naples paper. And I cut half inch strips and then I hand spun each one. And then I uh, wove them together. They're a group of extremely diverse individuals who love bookmaking and book arts. And their backgrounds are trained fine artists, printmakers, painters, um, librarians, people like me, um, teachers. I mean, they come from every different background in terms of bookmaking. It can be emotional to work in this medium with a eye toward communicating feelings about social justice. Um, one thing I try not to do is present something one-sided. What I want to do is understand it better. That means think more deeply about it. And that's where I try to go with my pieces. I want people who interact with my pieces to, first of all, find them appealing enough to interact in the first place, um, interesting enough to look through the whole thing. I want them to think. I want them to think.